Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. And today's topic is the salivary gland infections. And but before starting this topic, I would like to request you to like, subscribe, and share these videos to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, uh, you can visit my website, which is www.diseases and treatment.com or alternatively you can click the link in the description area just uh, below this video you know and it will lead you to a new page uh, of my website you know and uh, to subscribe the channel there is a red button just below this video so you can click the button thank you now i will come to the topic you know as uh, salivary gland infections you know a salivary gland infection occurs uh, when a bacterial or the a viral infection uh, it affects your salivary gland or the salivary duct you know salivary gland duct you know and the infection can result from uh, reduced saliva flow which can be uh, due to the blockage or the inflammation of the salivary duct you know and the condition is called uh, uh, cell den denitus you know and uh, the saliva, its function is that uh, it helps to digest the food. It breaks down the food in the small particles, you know, and uh, uh, it makes it, uh, uh, it works to keep your mouth clean as well, you know. And uh, uh, by mixing it with the food, it uh, helps to swallow it more comfortably, you know. And it washes away the bacteria and the food particles as well. So it also helps to control the amount of the good and the bad bacteria so to keep the balance of the bacteria in the mouth, you know. And there are few bacteria and the food particles uh, uh, are washed away when saliva does not <coughs> freely travel throughout the mouth, you know. And uh, this may lead to the infection, you know. And uh, uh, you have three pair, uh, pairs of uh, uh, like uh, uh, glands you know they are located on each side of your face uh, like uh, peritoneal glands which are the largest ones you know? and they are inside the cheek you know and uh, they sit above your jaw and in front of the ears and uh, uh, when one or the more of these glands is infected uh, it's called like uh, peritonitis you know and uh, the other one is like submandible glands. They are located on each side of your jaw, below the jawbone, you know. And uh, the sublingual glands sit on the bottom of your mouth, under the tongue. And uh, uh, additionally, the hundreds of the small, these are the major uh, salivary glands, you know, but there are hundreds of the small salivary glands uh, deposit the saliva from the top around your mouth, you know. The next thing is what are the causes? Uh, of the uh, salivary gland infections, you know. Well, it is typically caused by a bacterial infection and uh, Staphylococcus uh, aureus is the most common cause of the salivary gland infections, you know. And other causes uh, uh, are the bacteria or the germs that can cause the infection. They may include like the Staphylococcus veridens, you know, or um, uh, Acherichia coli, you know, and Staphylococcus uh, uh, pyogenes, you know or maybe um, hemophilus uh, influenzae. So these are the different types of the pathogens which can, uh, the bacteria, sorry, which can cause uh, uh, the infection, you know. And the infections result from uh, reduced uh, uh, saliva production. And uh, this is often caused by the blockage or the inflammation of the salivary gland duct, you know, which transports the saliva to the mouth, you know. And, uh, the viruses and uh, there are other medical conditions that can cause uh, the reduction in the production of the saliva, you know, and they include like uh, uh, mumps or uh, HIV or AIDS, you know, or influenza, herbs or uh, sarcoidosis, or tumor, or blocked salivary glands, you know, and uh, dehydration and uh, malnutrition or inadequate oral hygiene, you know or the radiation uh, therapy, you know, or the chemotherapy, etc., you know. 
I said, these are the uh, common causes, you know. And the next thing is, what are, are there any risk factors that uh, uh, can contribute in the formation of the uh, uh, kind of blockages or the infections, you know. Well, being over the age of 65, uh, having the adequate, uh, inadequate oral hygiene and not being immunized against the mumps. So these are the major risk factors. And uh, chronic conditions uh, can also increase your risk of uh, developing the infections of the salivary glands like HIV or AIDS or diabetes, malnutrition, bulimia, alcoholism or uh, like uh, uh, dry mouth syndrome, you know. Uh, yes, these are the uh, like of the risk factors, you know, this can cause. And uh, uh, the next thing is, what are the symptoms of the salivary gland infections? Well, you know, there's a list of uh, list, uh, kind of uh, symptoms, you know, and you should consult your doctor for accurate diagnosis. And the symptoms. Uh, uh, of a salivary gland infection can um, like mimic those of the other conditions as well you know so symptoms may include like uh, a face pain or pain in the mouth or discomfort or the pain when you are opening your mouth you know and a constant abnormal like uh, abnormal or the foul taste from the mouth and inability to open the mouth you know or uh, face pain or redness or swelling in the mouth you know or uh, uh, swelling of the face uh, or the neck, you know, and uh, signs of infection such like uh, chills or fever and uh, pain, you know. And so these are the common signs and the symptoms and you should consult your doctor if you are having trouble in uh, breathing or uh, in swallowing, you know, or the symptoms are worsening, you know, so in that case you should consult your doctor or if you have a high fever, you know which is a sign of infection. So, and uh, you know, the slightly glands uh, infection have some complications and cause some complications, you know, uh, although they are uncommon, you know. And if the slightly gland infection is left untreated, in that case, uh, the pus can collect and form an abscess in the slightly glands, you know. And the salivary gland infection caused by the benign tumor uh, may cause the enlargement of the glands. And uh, malignant or uh, the cancerous tumors uh, can grow quickly and cause the, the loss of the movement uh, in the affected area, you know, of the face, you know, or the mouth, you know. And this can impair the part of uh, uh, all the area, you know. And uh, in cases where the uh, peritonitis happens again, you know, uh, the severe uh, swelling of the neck and the, it destroys the affected glands, you know. So, you may also have the complications of if uh, the initial bacterial infection spreads from the salivary glands to other parts of the body, you know. And this can include like bacterial skin infection known as cellulitis or... Uh, um, uh, and like... Uh, uh, Ludwig's uh, angina, you know. Uh, which is kind of form of cellulitis that occurs in the bottom of the mouth, you know. The next thing is, uh, how do the doctors uh, diagnose the salivary gland infection? Well, your doctor will uh, ask you the questions about the history, you know, and then he will uh, uh, perform the visual and the, phys uh, or the physical examination, you know. And uh, pus or pain at the affected gland can indicate the bacterial infection or if you can see any abscess in the area, you know. And if your doctor suspects a salivary gland uh, infection, you know, uh, you may have the additional testings like uh, to confirm the diagnosis, you know, which may include like uh, uh, imaging tests, x-rays or CT scan or MRI of the mouth, you know, and that, that particular area, you know. And uh, your doctor may order biopsy, you know, to see if there's any lump or any tumor or to see, you will take out a small piece of that from that uh, area to see under the microscope uh, what is uh, causing this infection, you know, or the swelling, you know, or a disorder, you know. And if there's a growth, uh, or is there, that growth is cancerous or non-cancerous, which means benign or malignant, you know, 
and if it's uh, if it, it's important test you know because it helps to uh, in case of uh, the cancer it helps to choose the right treatment option you know so it's very important uh, test now once diagnosed in you know, water is the treatment option well it depends on the cause you know and the uh, cause of infection you know and uh, uh, any additional symptoms such as uh, swelling or pain may also contribute uh, help to choose the right treatment option you know and antibiotics may be used to treat the bacterial infection pus or fever you know and uh, a fine needle biopsy may be used to drain the abscess you know uh, okay and uh, so he, the your doctor will uh, insert a needle fine needle you know uh, to aspirate that abscess uh, the drainage after that pus you know so it will relieve the symptoms you know uh, and the home treatments may include like drinking uh, about 2 liters of water per day uh, uh, with lemon uh, to like uh, stimulate the saliva and keep the glands cleaner you know uh, massaging the affected area and applying the warm compresses on the affected area rinse your mouth with the salt water and uh, this can help to reduce the symptoms in case of infection, you know. And uh, as you know, the most salivary glands, uh, the infections of salivary glands don't uh, require surgery. Uh, but it may be necessary in some cases of chronic and recurring infections, you know. So, though it's uncommon, you know, but uh, the surgical treatment may involve the removal of the part or all of that uh, uh, slavic gland or removal of the submandibular slavic glands or parotid glands you know. but again it depends on the uh, severity of the infection you know or recurrence you know and uh, well there is no way that uh, you can prevent uh, most of the slavic glands you know and, uh, and the best way to reduce the risk of developing uh, of an infection is to drink plenty of fluids and practice good oral hygiene you know Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit our website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. Excuse me, and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Goodbye.